I just want to return to this idea of religious fixity that I talked about in the last couple of videos, the last video certainly, about how um, one of the, the ways that religion functions, all religions, including what are called stealth religions, one of the ways in which they function is they place you, they locate you in a certain relation to a certain set of ideas which appear to be coherent but which effectively um, structure and constrain your experience. So they, uh, they kind of set you down at a particular spot on the landscape of ideas and force you to look in a certain direction. And everything appears clear and everything appears open and appears transparent and you might even feel brightly illuminated by being set down in such a, a wonderfully clear and translucent environment. Uh, but like all fixed points, including the fixed point I'm standing on right now, it has its blind spots, it has its dark, it has its background, it has its occlusions, it has its horizons, it has all these um, these features. Uh, so I'm just thinking about that in relation to science and in relation to any, is there an alternative really? Because obviously um, if there's any validity in this idea of religion as being a, a locating and constraining force, uh, can you step outside of that by looking to science and saying, well, science doesn't do that? And I think there's a lot of validity in that. I mean, certainly uh, in terms of predictive value, in terms of establishing facts, in terms, in terms of getting some kind of intersubjective agreement about truth. I mean, it's, science is fantastic at that. Um, and you know, and other, and other kinds of practices, including religious practices, but also poetic and arts-based practices, don't even come close to making the same kind of truth claims about the physical world that science does. So it wins hands down in terms of that. But, having said that, I do think it still has... Uh, it, it still does have this kind of fixing quality. And I know there's some critiques written about this. You get it from some versions of uh, feminist epistemology. Donna Haraway talks about this. Um, Julia Kristeva talks about it, a number of different places. Um, and uh, Thomas Nagel talks about this in a great book called Objectivity and Subjectivity. At least I think it's called that. Maybe it's The View from Nowhere, that's it. Um, but this idea that you are, there, there's still this sense in which you're fixed. Uh, and the, the, tra the kind of translucence, the lucid quality, the objective transparency that science opens up, again, is something of a, uh, it's something of a limiter. It, is, it, it does still bring its own blind spots, um, certainly in terms of priorities and in terms of you know, what you choose to ignore. I mean, I'm not going to try and make a big case here for the power of the emotions or the power of consciousness. And I'm certainly not going to make any claims to spirituality, though, because I don't really have any... Uh, any relationship to those ideas, but I know that science is crap at talking about those ideas and in many cases dismisses those ideas. Um, and dismisses them not just because they're unfounded, in which they may well be, but dismisses, dismisses them as interesting questions. There was um, a great uh, video I looked at yesterday by Angie the, Angie the Atheist, something like that she's called. I'll put the thing up in the sidebar, whatever that is. Um, where she asks this question, you know, why, why am I an atheist, she says, talking about religion. And it prompted me to leave a comment reminding, because I was reminded of uh, Richard Dawkins citing the uh, editor of New Scientist magazine, who when New Scientist was, uh, was launched, I think, or he became, when he became the editor, he said the, the kind of philosophy he brought to the journal was the, the idea that uh, science is interesting, and if you don't agree, you can fuck off, he said. Uh, and I think the same kind of thing applies to religion in some ways. If you're interested in religion, which I am, even as, I'm, I'm a, as a non-believer, then that's good enough for me. And if you and if you don't, if you don't agree, you can fuck off. But unfortunately, I think a lot of um, uh, of science writing, atheistic science writing, uh, it effectively does just fuck off. Really, it doesn't um, it doesn't acknowledge it as an interesting subject. It simply dismisses it as fiction, which it may well be. I know I'm not making any case for it. I think most religions are fictional. All religions are fictional, but um, but interesting for that, nevertheless. And I think the that dismissing of 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 religion and other kinds of practices 
as uninteresting is part of the occluding process, part of the blind spot process that comes out of a fixed um, epistemological position, a fixed location in knowledge space that science adopts. It's, I mean, I'm not saying that science is a religion, clearly not, but because that would be too confusing. But, um, but it does the same thing that religion does, isn't it? It locates you within a set of, 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 of ideas, really. And that brings with it the baggage of blind spots and, and occlusions, as I said. Uh, so is there a way around that? I mean, the, only, the nearest thing I've got to a way around that, and this isn't really a way around it at all, it's just a trick up the try on myself sometimes. It's, I think I may have mentioned this before, but it comes out of um, who does it come out? Michael Moorcock, something like that, science fiction writer, or maybe somebody else, can't remember. But it's this thing called chaos magic. Chaos magic is a great idea, I think, it's just fantastic. But the idea of chaos magic is that you you make a kind of psychological and personal commitment to investigating a belief system. And that can be any that can be a scientific belief system or it can be a religious belief system or it can completely be made up it can be discordianism it can be completely made up uh, it can be a, you know a fiction from a novel if you like but you um, you make a total commitment to researching it and developing an interest in it and of course what you find with that is that uh, the more you find out about these things the more coherent it appears to you the more um, the landscape of knowledge around those ideas becomes available, the more sense it seems to make until by the end of it, I, I've certainly found this, you start to believe it in a way which, in which it becomes a, a viewpoint on the world. But the point about chaos magic is that once you've established yourself, once you've found this viewpoint, once you've been kind of religiously located by the practice, at that point you switch, you move on. You move to a different point, you adopt a different set of belief systems, you research a completely different religion, scientific practice, um, made up ontology, whatever it may be, and you try to orient yourself around that one. And you just keep doing that. Uh, and everything just becomes a little bit more uh, lighter, really. Everything has a slightly lighter touch to it once you've done that a few times. You don't feel quite so invested in your viewpoint after a while.